Hello guys, I uh, wasn't going to do this but I ended up stripping down my gas tank, literally scraping it off. It was covered with, uh, uh, I'm thinking it was rock guard and or tar or something, but anyways it was quite a messy job but I got her scraped down because I got to solder in a new return pipe and uh, I gotta get a new sending in anyway, so thought I'd clean her up best I could. I actually had some dents in it and took them out. One I couldn't get out. Uh, right there. So I gotta clean that up a little more. And once I get it, the buddy's coming down, I'm gonna solder a new pipe in for me. And uh, once I get that, I am gonna rock guard the top again, but I'm not gonna rock guard the bottom. I'm just going to paint the bottom. Uh, I don't think I'm going to rock there at the bottom. Anyways, it was all a mess. So, and I had to find out if the tank was good. And it is. And it is uh, really good inside. See if we can uh, get a light down in there. Uh, you can see that. It's nice and shiny. Uh, inside the tank. So... I'm already for the first to tank out, so I did have another tank that's good on the outside, but rusty, just just a mass of rust inside, so that's garbage that's going in the scrap pile. I did try to clean it out last summer or summer before, but it just did not clean up, so that's trash. And I'll give you a shot of the fuel lines here. I got them on. I haven't been out here a lot, it's just petering away. But once I get this gas tank soldered up I'll, uh, and the scratch cleaned up, I'll get, give you a shot of uh, the fuel lines I got in the last what, yesterday and last Sunday. So, almost ready. As soon as I get this painted, I'll get a new uh, sending unit this week, and then I can put the tank on. And then, uh, should be good to go. There, I got my bleeders. I've got them in there. I put a little bit of Teflon tape around the, whoa, around the threads. A uh, buddy of mine suggested that so they, uh, so they wouldn't uh, leak air when you pump the little vacuum pump there. So I put that on there, and uh, I might get those bled today. I'm not sure, but uh, my main goal is to try to get this primed and rock guard it maybe some paint on it I'm not sure yet depends on how late it is so anyways I'll be back
seen. It's underneath the curve, so hopefully. I decided to rock guard the whole tank. She's a little bended up, so this will just help the back cut. So. And once it dries, I'll give it a coat of black paint just to protect the rock guard, turning it up. I'll put paint on it. Just by itself, it seems like it's the uh, better effect when it's painted. You can see the paint looks a lot better. Stay still. There. Anyways, that's all she's gonna get. Just a quick coat. And no, oh, it makes it look better. And you seem kind of silly. We just take it and clean it all off and put it all back on, but uh now I know what I got for a tank. Tank is in good shape, just got some weevils in it right here, but they're not real real bad. Just I took some of it out, but I couldn't get it all out, so anyways, I'm going to let this set. I think it says six hours, so we'll let her set, and then I'll give her a quick coat of paint, and we'll be back. Alright guys, there it is, all nice and cleaned up, shiny, ready to go under the car, as soon as I get a new uh, sending unit. I don't want to trust the old one, I don't think. I don't even know what it did with it. Here's somewhere. Ah, there it is. I just want to get the number off it. I think I'll uh, get Sherry to order me one tomorrow. And I'll put that in before I put the tank up and be done with it. It's all crowded up around this connection. Pretty bad, so still in pretty good shape but it's just been laying around too long so we'll get a new one of them and next weekend we'll uh, get the tank in and fuel running to the engine through the lines which I'll show you what I got done it still needs a little bending and twisting and the heck, I'm going to set you down here for a second. Uh, and find that latch, especially when you got a rig and over top of it, there it is. I got the lines run right to here. Right above the fuel pump. And I still got to put a bracket or a holding clamp. Hold that over away from the header. Getting it around that frame was a whoo, challenge down in through there and I still got to tweak that some more. Get some pieces of wood and whatever and uh, straighten it all out. Under here, I got to get some, uh, I ended up using the old clamps because the ones I bought were for a single line and these were for double so I'm going to see if I can get the double line clamps with the rubber in them 
and I'll replace all these and that give me a chance to squeeze that together straighten those lines up some more and I put a filter in uh, got this from my brother's stash and uh, got that all hooked up and uh, this is my return line which I just angled around it's not real real neat but it doesn't look too too bad and we go <sighs> back along here across there which I'm gonna try to re-bend this so it's arched up on each corner instead of the way it is this was really difficult I don't know why people buy fuel lines already pre-bent and I got it going up there and across to the middle of the car up in there so once I put the tank on then I'll be able to show you that I'll hook all that up but uh, that took quite a while to do because it was it was really hard to work with so but looks pretty good so far like I said just needs uh, I want to straighten it up a little more and get them so they're not ones beside the other right now they're kind of flopped on top of each other so this stuff's weird because you bend it and then it does weird things it's just it's really hard to work with but I did figure out the bends bender uh, how to get the bends in the right place on the, on the tool itself you had to uh, figure out where you want it the center of the 45 or 90 whatever you were doing and there was an, another mark on the tool so um, and I don't like how it's so close to the floor right there but we'll get that figured out as I go and I'm going to do a vacuum test on it and see if make sure there's no leaks and I gotta get out of here that you only work under there so long but uh, there's where it was really hard to work right up in through there and I'm pretty sure that was the path uh, like I said when I got the two-door car all it had was a uh, rubber line from one end to the other I did get my new bleeders I haven't bled them yet I just switched them out so I gotta do that yet and like I said, but next weekend I hope to have fuel coming from the tank to here. My buddy was down and soldered this in for me, the new return line. And the old one only went to there, so I put a 90 in it to go over here. So that's done. And I think, you, I, think I showed you, I welded that on there. And uh, I re-welded it with the gas on, which I forgot to do. And then to top that off, when I was painting this, I had forgotten to turn the compressor on. So, just tired, had a quite a busy week. Oh yeah, I got the Bondo detector from HPR and uh, got to talk to him on the phone. Had a really good chat with him. I think we were on the phone for three hours. So I really enjoyed that. Great fella. Just a great fella. And... Uh, Oh yeah, I remember too, I was talking to Jerry on the phone, Cheater 40, and he said he learned something from my videos of the fuel lines, and uh, I learned something too. The next one I do, and I gotta put fuel lines on it, they'll be going on before the engine goes in, because it would have made it a whole lot easier, a whole lot easier. So, and I still gotta bend a line from the fuel pump to the carburetor because I want to get rid of that rubber right there because it's getting all pinched up and everything so I want to fix that up I see uh, Mr. Heavy Chevy had made one and it looked pretty good so I'm going to give her a whirl and uh, see if I can make a new one of them so it's all one piece and uh, also guys here uh, probably I don't know about this week but First of next week, I'm going to get another batch of stickers, and anybody wants one, just let me know. Uh, PM me your address, and maybe we'll swap some with some, some of you guys. And uh, just as soon as I get the fuel tank on this thing, and the brakes bled, it's going outside, and this garage is going to get cleaned up. Because it's getting pretty warm out, not hot by no means, but the weather's turning. So I should be able to put the snowblower away, 
and got to give this garage a good cleaning because it's packed from corner to corner and uh, I, well, as you can see I got stuff everywhere even I got an old stove I'm gonna clean up and redo I mean that thing's really old but it's in great shape but I got to get it cleaned up and get it out of here put it away sell it trade it something fella give it to me and he had to get rid of it and uh, I liked it so I brought it here but I the door is kind of too small for my likings I like a bigger door on the stove so and uh, oh man this place is just a just a wreck so anyways I'm jumping all over the place here like I usually do uh, back to the stickers yeah I'm gonna get some here in probably a week maybe this week if I get a chance uh, pretty busy at work um, pretty busy pretty interesting too we just uh, got a new customer which is uh, Robert Aronson out of Florida I believe his name is uh, Apollo Energy Systems and uh, I got a couple molds from him that he wants some grids made for electric vehicles so it's pretty interesting it's a uh, it's a uh, grid casting that we're not used to they're really really thin 0 0.045 thousandths of an inch thick that's not very thick we're used to running grids that are like really thick for those you don't know i work at a battery factory uh i don't know a whole heck of a lot about the batteries because i make what goes inside the batteries the grids so i work with a lot of lead uh probably I don't know, three or four thousand pounds of lead a day when I'm casting. And uh, one year, I think I used a million pounds of lead. So I don't really, I res respect being around lead, but I don't have any trouble uh, with my blood lead levels that we have to have checked very often. Myself, it's every 56 days because I'm a low 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 I have low lead levels but uh, anyways that's that's been making work interesting is something different uh, and I thought that was pretty interesting I looked it up on they didn't tell us nothing there but I looked up uh, Apollo energy systems on the internet and that was pretty interesting um, to see a little bit about that so and I'll probably look into it a little more just, yeah, I think right now it's just a trial trial thing but in no doubt in my mind it's going to go somewhere so uh, that's kind of been slowing me down here at home because I don't know something new like that I'm trying to figure it out oh it makes you really tired so but anyways I'm gonna let you go here uh, say so yeah, it doesn't seem like I got a lot done but it is a lot done and I'm almost done this part and I can get back on the blocking and uh, after talking to HBR on the phone kind of I don't know inspired me to get back on the bodywork so I can uh, have it ready to paint the summer so and I real I thought that you know quarter inch was a lot of body fill but I guess that's not too big so. and it's just it needs to be in small areas so I've been over it a couple times just you know just playing around with that little filler detector which uh got thank him again for sending that's a really fun little tool tool or toy or whatever you want to call it so anyways gonna let you go here and hopefully next weekend this thing will be fueled by the tank and have our own brakes so we'll be able to move her out of the garage and get this place cleaned up so hope everybody has a good week and uh thanks for watching take care talk to you later